What's going on everyone? Is Jamie here from SAS University and this is going to be our first YouTube video. I'm going to go over the meaning of SAS. So what does it mean? What are some examples? And where do you see it in real life? So if you enjoyed this video along the way, I would love it so much if you hit that like and subscribe button below as this is our first video here and we are trying to grow the channel. We're trying to be coming up with videos every day as well. Covering SaaS, going over different strategies, pricing models, funnels, marketing, you name it, we'll cover it. So make sure you stay updated. So let's first go over what SaaS is. If you don't know what it means, it means software as a service. And so SaaS provides use of software over the internet to the end user. Sometimes there's downloaded apps, but it's generally cloud-based. So the software is going to be hosted on another platform. And it's generally going to be subscription-based as well with a monthly or annual fee. So let's say $20 a month, $50 a month for some smaller SaaS companies. And it could be discounted rate for the yearly. Something to note about SaaS is that it has really fast upgrades. There are no updates needed. It's not going to be like when you have a phone or an app there where you mainly have to click that update button. Since a lot of these are cloud-based and web-based, you can just log in and it's going to automatically update it for you. So I think the clearest case here is just going to take a look at some examples. A lot of these examples you probably used in your real life here or in your day-to-day -day activities. So it's all going to make sense once we go through them. Let's first go into Dropbox. Dropbox was one of the first really big SaaS companies to come around. And I'm sure you used it before. It essentially lets you store your files online. Then you can access them on any device, making your life easier as you don't have to worry about manually transferring things over on a USB drive. Similar services now such as iCloud and Google does the same thing. But I remember Dropbox being one of the first. So the reason this is a SaaS product is that you're not going to be downloading it to your computer, although they do have extensions now, but originally it was all web-based where you can log on and access your files. So it fits that cloud hosted there because the processing power and the storage is not done locally on your computer. It also fits here because it charges a subscription fee, so a monthly fee or a yearly fee. As you can see on their pricing plane or page here, they have different plans and different prices. You can also do monthly or yearly as you're gonna save some money there. The next example we'll take a look at here is MailChimp. And so it's a email automation platform, making it really easy to send emails to customers. So let's say your e-commerce business, you're gonna get those automated add to cart emails. Maybe you're sending campaigns to all your subscribers to let them know about your new big sale or your new course that you've come out. MailChimp does a good job with that. So it's a SaaS business because it's hosted online. You can access it through the web and you can create all your email automations flows by doing so. You don't need to download a standalone app. You don't need to insert a disk into your computer. It's all hosted online here. They also have monthly and yearly plans as well, going from free to 11, 17 and 2.99 a month depending on the number of contacts you have. Next, let's take a look at DocuSign. So it's gonna be a SaaS company that makes agreements happen online. They have over a million customers and a billion users trust DocuSign with critical and essential ingredients. So it's gonna make it really easy to sign online. This is gonna be different from wet signatures. We had to go in and sign something in person. And so this company did really well over a time period such as COVID when people didn't want to go to the office here. So again, this is going to be an all online product and they're going to be pricing on an annual and monthly basis, depending on your needs. So SaaS has become a really big trend. A lot of companies switching to a SaaS model for more subscription based pricing. And if we take a look at the 50 biggest SaaS companies in the world, we can see SaaS is here to stay. And there are a ton of companies that use this model and are very successful. Now these companies are new. So I'd say over the last 20 years, for the most part, SaaS companies have come to play with different services such as AWS, making it really easy to spin up new servers and to create your SaaS applications. Take a look at the largest one. It is Adobe. They switched to a monthly subscription here rather than having to buy Photoshop every few years or so for hundreds of dollars. Salesforce was the original SaaS company. It's a CRM platform worth 189 billion. Other common ones such as Shopify, Snowflake, Zoom here, which I'm sure you've all used recently, Plantier, HubSpot, Twilio, DocuSign, as we looked at. So overall, a ton of companies here, and they have a very high market cap for all of them listed in the top 50. You may be asking, why is SaaS great for the consumer? And there are four distinct advantages. The first one's going to be cost. It's going to find notable savings. There's going to be no upfront cost of purchase or installation, as well as going on costs such as maintenance and upgrades. So instead of spending a lot of money having hardware installations, SaaS can be easily downloaded and maintained as well as the pay as you go model. So 30 years ago, if you wanted to install a new application for your company, you'd have to have someone manually come in and install it, create those servers or install it on your existing servers. That was very expensive and time consuming, whereas many SaaS companies are plug in and play. The second advantage here is time. So that leads into that nicely. Installation is as simple as having an internet connection and acquiring a login. And so maintenance responsibilities are shifted from your IT department to the vendor itself. Also gonna allow for scalability and access. So the pay as you go model is really great for providing different options as you can upgrade and downgrade easily. Also compatibility is again, it's gonna be shifted to the vendor or the provider of the SaaS product, saving you enormous amounts of time and money. So overall, this concludes the video on what is SaaS, the meaning of SaaS. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this video. 
If you enjoyed it, I would love to hit that like and subscribe button below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in our next video.